everyone, welcome back to Crossway Kids Online. This week, as we continue to explore contentment, we are going to be exploring a desert. Oh man, it's hot in here. Even in all this heat, let's still praise our God. You are above every other Your love amazes me You created every beautiful color For everyone to see I want the world to know I want my life to show Just what your love has done for me Praise God, cause only you deserve it. I want the world to know, I want my life to show just what your love has done for me. Hey everyone, welcome to Game Time. I'm Andrew and I'm joined uh, by Lockie and Tyson. I was going to say that the other way around actually, sorry. Um, great that you lads are here to play this game with me. It's called Post-It Face. And you can see from the example, what you need to do is in one minute, put as many post-its on your face. The person with the most wins and the prize is the leftover post-it. So great prize up for grabs. Uh, I've just given you an example. You wrote hug me on it. All right, we'll do that later. All right, are you ready? Yep. Set. Uh, yeah. Go. All right. So Tyson started straight in the spot, mate. Mate, they got a stick on though. That's not like. <laughs> wow. Um, we might have got the cheap post-it notes, and um, you're not going to win with one. I'd go a bit quicker than that, Tyson. I'd be like uh, maybe getting them close to your face, and <gasps> do you want me to show you? Like you know, you just go like this. That's it. That's it. Well, that's not cheating. What's cheating? Well, I didn't say anything. You know, I just said. Stick as many to your face as you can. You know, I, I think, I feel like I'm winning. Like, anyway, that's half the time, like 30 seconds gone. We got the pink ones, they're good. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, Lockie. Now you just gotta make them stick. Yeah, see, that's the problem. The pink ones are bad. We've, we've got like 20 seconds left and we've got one. <laughs> one. Scratch um, that, two. Two, yeah, ooh. Done it. <laughs> uh, we've got 10 seconds left, ready? Nine, eight, seven, <laughs> six, Five, no, four, right. three, two, one, and that's it. Wow. 
I think you guys need to wash your face um, so they stick. Anyway, um, I feel like I win, so um, I get to take all these. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Game Time. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Exodus, chapters 16 and 17. The Israelites had lived as slaves in Egypt for hundreds of years, but God worked miraculous signs and parted the waters of the Red Sea to lead them to freedom. Sing to the Lord, he is greatly honored. He has brought Pharaoh, Moses, and chariot drivers into the Red Sea. God's people were free. But it didn't take long for all that singing and celebrating to turn into whining. The Israelites complained to their leader, Moses. You must want all of us to die of hunger out here. Yeah, we had it good in Egypt. All the food we wanted. You do remember you were slaves, right? But we had so much meat we could barbecue every day. <sighs> the people continued to grumble. So Moses took their complaints to the Lord. The people don't trust you to give them food. I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people must go out each day. Have them gather enough bread for that day. Moses and Aaron called the people of Israel together to share God's words. Come to the Lord. He has heard you speak against him. As Aaron spoke, the glory of the Lord appeared as a cloud in the desert. Once again, God spoke to Moses. Tell the people, when the sun goes down, you will eat meat. In the morning, you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Moses and Aaron told the people everything that God had said. In the evening, you will know that the Lord brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord. He will give you meat to eat in the evening. He'll give you all the bread you want in the morning. Ha! Seeing is believing. Then you should probably look over there. Whoa. A large flock of quail, more birds than anyone had ever seen, settled upon the camp like a twittering, fluttering ocean. Quail barbecue for dinner! That evening, everybody in the camp ate their fill. And in the morning, heavy dew settled on the ground. And as it dried, it left something behind. What's this? Looks like snow. Like what? The stuff that falls on mountaintops. Flaky, white, tastes like honey. This is manna. It's the bread the Lord has given you to eat. Gather only as much as you need for the day. What about tomorrow? Don't keep any of it until morning. God will give us what we need then. The Israelites gathered up the manna, sharing until each family had enough. Manna cakes, manna pudding, Manna tostadas. Manna and quail pizza. Some people disobeyed God and tried to keep leftovers until the next day. Ew. But any manna kept overnight filled with maggots. Ugh. As long as the Israelites stayed in the desert, the Lord provided fresh manna for them to eat every single morning. Time to move camp. The Israelites soon moved to their next camp in Rephidim, and although manna was plentiful, fresh water was not. Seriously, I am so parched. Even though God had worked miracle upon miracle and provided food from nowhere, the Israelites still panicked. They turned on Moses once again. Give us water to drink right now. Why are you arguing with me? Don't you trust the Lord? Why did you lead us out of Egypt? At least we had water there. Now we're all going to die of thirst. The Israelites were so angry, they actually picked up stones to throw at Moses. Frustrated, Moses cried out to the Lord. Well, what am I gonna do with these people? They're ready to kill me. Go out in front of the people. Take the walking stick you used when you struck the Nile River. I will stand there in front of you by the rock at Mount Horeb. Hit the rock then water will come out of it. Thank you, Lord. 
Moses called the leaders and the people of Israel together. Come up with me to the rock at Mount Horeb. The huge rock overshadowed Moses as he walked beneath it, walking stick held high. Now see what God will do. Moses struck the rock. Immediately, God caused cold, clear water to gush from the rock, forming a rushing stream below. <gasps> Not bad. Yeah, I guess it beats Egypt for now. Over and over, God showed that he would care for his people, but still the Israelites were tempted to long for what they had before, in spite of their newfound freedom. It's easy for us to look at the Israelite situation and think, oh, I wouldn't complain in that situation. But the truth is, our stories are not all that different from each other. You know, sometimes it can feel like we're cruising along, everything in our lives is going great. Maybe you try out for the soccer team and you land the best position on the team. Or maybe it's Christmas time and there are heaps of presents under the tree with your name on it. Or maybe you get to be in the same class as your best friends. However, in the next moment, we might find ourselves complaining because this year's soccer team didn't win as much as last year. Or maybe we don't have the gifts that we want at Christmas. Or maybe the teacher that you have this year gives you so much homework. You know, it doesn't take much for us to start complaining when things don't go our way. But what if our life could look different? What if instead of focusing on what we don't have or what we used to have, we focus on what we do have right now? You know, God looks after us just like he looked after the Israelites. And he doesn't guarantee that we're always going to win every soccer game we play, but he does give us opportunities to make new friends. And we're not always going to get every present that we want at Christmas time, but God does give us reason to celebrate Jesus. And he's not always going to give us an easy teacher, but he does give us opportunities to grow and learn. And we can grow closer to him too. You know, God's love is so great. He loves us so much. He sent Jesus to die on the cross so that we can be friends with him forever. Psalm 118 verse 24 says, This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's play a game of hot potato. Grab a pillow and when you can hear music playing, toss it around to each other. And when the music stops, I want that person to name something great that's happened in their day today. Let's play. Great game, guys. I'm sure you came up with so many great things that God's doing in your life. And you know, when I think about all those things, I can't help but feel content. So this week, I challenge you to end each day by thanking God for something that he did for you that day. Let's take some time to pray to God together.
Okay guys, I've been stuck in this desert for a really long time and it's getting seriously hot in here. I think it's time that we get home. Oh, that is so much better. Oh, this week, let's be thanking God for all of the amazing things he is doing around us. And actually, we can be praying to God all the time. Like we should pray to thank him right now. Oh man. Well, I guess I'll see you next week, guys.